Hey guys, it's Jeff and it's been about three days since I was 14 it was released and after using it extensively, I finally have some solid thoughts on this new version of iOS and we'll get into if you should be installing it onto your device just a little bit later so stick around for that. First off, I do want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor of this week's and last week's iOS 14 content and that is ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is by far the best VPN service out there and they didn't approach me to sponsor the channel. I actually approached them because I saw the value in their services and how reliable they are. They've actually been so kind as to offer all of you guys three months free when you use the link down below. And in addition to that, every 50th user that signs up through our link down below will get a $300 Apple gift card. So if you guys don't like their VPN service, there's a 30 day money back guarantee and that won't affect your entry into our giveaway. So guys, check out the Express VPN link down below you definitely won't regret it. Okay, so first off, I do have to make sure that you guys know we are still in beta one at the time of filming this video. So there may be new features in the coming betas that we don't talk about in this video and the beta experience will most likely change from one release to another. So your mileage may vary if you choose to test out iOS 14. Now getting more into the actual release here and so far I'd say that there's a healthy mix of good and bad things going on with beta one. I'll start off with the pros first and that's most likely going to be the new features that I personally like in iOS 14 beta one. So let's check them out. Okay, so first up is UI elements and how dynamic they are now in iOS 14. The first two major changes for me that I absolutely love is the new call UI and the new Siri UI. The call UI is now up at the top and doesn't take up your entire screen as it did before. And for me, this allows me to still enjoy content on my screen when a call comes in and not have everything screwed up by a simple phone call. What's even better is the content that might be playing on screen continues to play. So my content isn't at all affected by an incoming phone call through this new call UI interface. There's also that new Siri UI that I mentioned. And just like the call UI, Siri no longer takes up your entire screen. The new UI does look a lot more modern and the results appear at the top so you can literally use Siri for whatever you want while using other content. This would be great if you want to, let's say, dial a number using Siri or if you want to create some reminders or messages based upon a Safari tab you have currently open. Overall, I'm just really loving how Apple has changed some of those UI elements that were taking up the entire screen and made them just a little bit more usable for the average user. Now, next up for me was widgets. And we've been talking about widgets forever now as being a rumored feature coming to iOS 14. And finally, iOS 14 is here. And lo and behold, widgets is a feature. Now, in the leaks and rumors, we saw this exact representation of widgets, but I wasn't all too sold on it simply because I wasn't able to use it. Now that we actually have iOS 14, I can mess around with widgets and I can say that these things are absolutely awesome. Now, for now, we only have the Apple stock app widgets, but even then, you still get a lot of use out of those. And this feature will get better when third-party developers make their own widgets that you can implement into your home screen, so I only expect this feature to get better in the near future. I know for me, the widget that I'm looking forward to the most, I think would be Spotify. So um, yeah, if you guys have any ideas for widgets for the new widget feature, let me know in the comment section down below what app you want to see have a widget and like what functionality that would be. But yeah, widgets is a great thing in iOS 14 and for the future of iOS, I think that it's a great feature to expand on for third-party developers. Okay, so next up for me is the new sleep tracking features brought to the health app. I was actually a full-time user of the bedtime feature when it was located in the clock app, but now Apple has actually moved that feature to the health app and it's a lot more dynamic now in iOS 14. You can select from different bedtimes and sleep times for each day of the week and you can also set up a wind down time so you can properly wind down your day before it's time for bed. You also have that new sleep tracking feature located in watchOS 7 which will give you some pretty accurate sleep data and uh, for me I haven't been able to test it just yet because I have a smart bed and it's really no use for me to sleep with my Apple Watch but I will be testing out uh, that sleep feature and giving you guys a full review. Still though, the new sleep features are actually really cool in iOS 14, especially because sleep is super important to a healthy lifestyle and it's now super easy to manage and set up in iOS 14 versus what we're seeing in iOS 13. 
Okay, so one of the last new features for me that I really wanted to make a point out of showing you guys would be the PIP or picture in picture abilities in iOS 14. Now, obviously we've had this feature on the iPad in iOS 13, but we've never seen it on the iPhone despite so many users requesting it year after year. Finally, it's here and it's actually a very useful feature. The feature is actually more dynamic than what we saw in iOS 13 on the iPad, so that's quite nice that Apple at least added some tweaks to it rather than delivering a clone of a feature that we've already seen before on another device running iOS 13. The only bad thing at this point in time that a lot of people, including myself, have noticed is that it doesn't work with YouTube. So uh, I've gotten it to work with apps like Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, and Netflix, but all of those had the picture-in-picture -picture ability on the iPad, so it would only make sense that those kind of carry over to the iPhone. Nevertheless, I'm sure that once YouTube updates their app properly for iOS 14, we'll see this feature and hopefully everyone should be happy, but I do expect that to be limited at least to maybe premium members of um, the YouTube community. Who knows what they'll do, but hopefully that feature does come to YouTube very, very soon. Okay, so those were some of the highlights for me, at least for iOS 14, and obviously there are so many more new features that are totally awesome, but in an effort to keep this video on the shorter side, I didn't wanna go over everything, but if you guys have been testing out iOS 14 or have seen some cool features that you really, really like, let me know what they are in the comment section down below. I'd love to see what you all like in this new update of iOS 14. Now, let's get into some of the cons of iOS 14 because there are always cons when it comes to betas, especially the first one of a brand new version of iOS. And first up for me has to be just normal UI bugs here and there. Um, I've discovered some in the control center, lock screen, and also in the settings app, but to be honest, on a scale of one to 10 as to how annoying they actually are, I'd say it's about a two at most. I'd say that the most annoying thing I've experienced with the UI is that it's just locked up completely on me twice, and I just had to wait 10 to 15 seconds for it to get back up to speed so I can use it again. Uh, fortunately, no resprings or hard resets, so that's not an issue, but you may experience some lag from time to time on third-party applications as well. Uh, now, speaking of third-party applications, that's another point I wanted to make. I've noticed that a lot of third-party apps do have a few performance issues for some reason, and that's probably due to the fact that these developers haven't had the chance to update their apps accordingly for iOS 14. Now, don't get me wrong, these are not complaints from me at all because we are in beta one, we are in a beta in general, and uh, just in case you want to install iOS 14, I just want to give you this information uh, so that your mileage may vary when it comes to third-party apps being as fast as they were in iOS 13. Now, on the other hand, the good news is that I haven't had one app crash or be completely unusable in iOS 14, so uh, thank goodness that I'm not losing any functionality uh, for the apps that I use on a daily basis, and fingers crossed that that those work until the end of these betas and onto the official release uh, later in September and October. I'll keep you guys updated if I have any issues. Now, the last thing that I wanted to mention was new features like, let's say, the widgets feature. They don't exactly work 100%, and this will go for basically all uh, new features that you see in betas. They might not work 100%. Now, in regards to the widgets, they're not really properly updating. That goes for a news widget. Um, the most significant is the weather widget. So basically, if I have um, you know a quick look at the weather, it may say, like let's say, uh, 72 degrees, and really it's 70, or vice versa. Um, basically, it's collecting data from like an hour or two ago. It's not updating every so often. So um, this it probably is a bug and probably ne needs to be fixed by Apple, and that should be coming in beta two. But in the meantime, that's just a very small bug um, in a new feature that is kind of um, not so great. So, uh, you know, it will be fixed in the coming betas, but uh, if you do join the betas like in iOS 14, um, just do expect for kind of the new features not to be 100% ready to go. Okay guys, so for me, those were a few of the pros and cons in iOS 14. And as I said before, we really don't have time to go over everything, uh, but I did just want to highlight some items that I've experienced so far in beta one of iOS 14. Now onto that big topic of today's video, should you install the beta onto your personal device? Uh, I'd say for the average user who doesn't want to be bothered with any bugs whatsoever, uh, maybe hold off until the public betas as those are typically more stable and meant for general use, like general public use. Um, for those that don't mind a few bugs and really want to experience those new features found in iOS 14, I'd say shoot for it and install the betas, but do keep in mind that your mileage may vary on uh, battery life, new features, and 
and usability. I can't really say which devices work the best on iOS 14 um, because it literally varies from device to device, but I will say though that iOS 14, um, I've seen a whole lot more comments in support of iOS 14 versus iOS 13 and previous uh, first betas um, that I've seen in the past. So um, at this point, I would recommend it because it actually is a very stable build of beta one for an iOS version. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope that gives you a little bit more insight into how your experience may be on iOS 14. And if you do decide to update, let me know uh, your experience in the comment section down below. And of course, if you do need help updating, I did release a video uh, which you can watch on how to do that. Link for that will be in the uh, uh, description below. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comment section. And yeah, that is uh, it for today. Uh, so thank you all for watching today's video. And if you liked it, definitely leave a like down below. Get subscribed to stay up to date with the latest iOS 14 content and hit that bell button so you get updates as soon as we release any new videos. Uh, oh, and before I forget, uh, make sure to check out ExpressVPN via the link down below. Their app is definitely a must have on iOS devices just in case you were looking for ways to protect your internet browsing experience. Okay, so that's it for me today. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you in some future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day. And for those of you who have iOS 14 installed, I hope you're enjoying the experience of iOS 14. Peace out, guys.